consider supporting Arkea Soup on Patreon for as little as a dollar per month. Link available in the video description. Questions of Doom. Hello and welcome back to another Questions of Doom. In this series, as ever, I attempt to answer questions that you send my way using the archaeosoup at gmail.com email address, as displayed on this YouTube channel's homepage, but also as you'll find at the end of this video. In answering these questions by video, it is my fond hope, as ever, that the answer is not only useful to the person who's asked the question, but also anyone else out there who may be wondering the same thing. And in this instance, I know for a fact there are a great many people wondering this thing. So I get this question very frequently, uh, for years now, in fact, maybe once a month, twice a month at least. And it's essentially, why trowels? Why trowels? Why? Eh? 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 Why do archaeologists use trowels on archaeological excavations? And it's a fair question, and it's a question that I did answer to a certain extent back in 2012 when I, I was first getting going with Archaeosoup. So uh, I've been pointing people towards that video now for years, for, for nine, nine years, oh my goodness me, <laughs> for nine years now. Um, but it's recently come to my attention that there are a couple of problems with the video that I'd like to fix. So first of all, the link in the video description on that one now goes nowhere. The uh, Council for British Archaeology blog post about the history of trial usage in archaeology no longer exists. So uh, so that's no that's a dead link now. Although I the men, the information I reference from it uh, is still valid in that video. And also, there were, there were a couple of things in terms of the the, the early usage of, a, of, of the trowel and the description of a trowel that I'd like to add. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add to that video by recording this introduction, and then we'll visit that as a re-edited piece as well, because I'd like to insert some visual elements, maybe tidy up the audio. It's kind of a semi-special edition with some addendum information uh, attached. So... Um, one example would be that in the the previous why trowels video i mentioned uh, as the blog post mentioned that that, that we have a sort of a, a, a 19th century 1800s 1870s i think date for a point when archaeologists were using various tools but not trowels interestingly there's a photograph of them laying out the tools of their trade going here you go here you go take a photo of that but there's no trowels present so at some point after that, archaeologists starting using trowels. One that I'd like to suggest, you know, at least by 1928 to 1929, is found in photographs of uh, Vera Gordon Child's excavation of Scara Bray. It's a wonderful site, a, a famous dig in the history of archaeology, and crucially, in recent years, uh, as highlighted in a BBC News article, which should be better archived than the, the CBA's blog post, um, it was highlighted that, uh, that not only was Vera Gordon Child digging there, but also some lady archaeologists, there were a couple of female archaeologists in, in the photograph, who are brandishing trowels. They're not just sightseers, you know, after lunch. They're, they're actually there to do some digging. So, um, uh, we, so we have that, you know, at least by 1928, 1929, pointing trowels had, 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 had entered the archaeological toolkit. Of course, recently we've seen... Um, in the movie The Dig on Netflix, uh, actually even in the trailer for that movie, we have, for example, Peggy Piggott using trowels uh, in excavation. And that, that's a dig, obviously, in the late 1930s. So certainly by, by 1928, trowels were being used by archaeologists. Um, a, a nice description of a, an archaeological trowel would be that they tend to be pointing trowels. They tend to be 10 to 15 centimetres or 4 to 6 inches uh, long, the blade length, that is. And there are two main brands that, that ar archaeologists will sort of go, this is my trowel. is a And it tends to depend on what sort of school you come from, or actually what country you uh, you come from. So if you are a British archaeologist or an archaeologist in the, the, the tradition of British archaeology, you're more likely to have a soft spot for the WHS trowel, uh, which stands for 
according to my notes, uh, William Hunt and Sons of Braid Steel Works uh, in Sheffield, using Sheffield steel. They made a trowel which, uh, which is very um, durable, very inflexible, very uh, sturdy. And uh, they've, been, they've been making steel artifacts since the late 1700s. But in this case, the WHS, which doesn't stand for a... Um, <laughs> for a news agent, which I thought it did when I was, I was uh, first first leaving high school and going into studying archaeology. I was like, but why does the BHS sell trowels? I don't get it. No, no, it's it's that's where it comes from. It's a nice sturdy trowel, but it actually stands in contrast to the the US favoured trowel. If you have learned archaeology in the American tradition, in the sort of the the I guess the physical anthropology um, digging school of thought then you're more likely to favor the Marshalltown trowel. Now Marshalltown uh, is an American brand since the 1890s and it's marked out by having a slightly more flexible blade so you're more likely to to uh, to, to feel the difference in terms of how you you're managing your wrist and the soil and and I've heard it said that uh, you run the risk potentially if you're for example trying to trowel out uh, an awkward piece of stone or something from it from a context you might run the risk of springing it out of the trench with the Marshall Town because it's so it's so flexible but that might just be a WHS fan uh, you know you know um, uh, being mean about about the brand that they don't like so so there you go there are two main brands they tend to be around four to six inches um in size in terms of the um in terms of the blade size and uh crucially there's an excellent really really great um archaeological trowel primer and introduction from the bamber uh research project the brp uh starring tom gardner one of the most amazing uh and generous um, one day archaeological experiences I've ever had uh, with, with another human being actually at a place where we did a site visit a few years ago so uh, I check that out I put the link in the video description below if you want to know more on the specifics of the use of trowel I talk about it a little bit in in the 2012 video but he really goes into it and you can see him using it in the field so so check that out uh, I suppose the last thing to say is that this this 2012 video was filmed in and around Christmas 2012 and also I was still learning the ropes when it came to speaking in front of camera so um, I'm even more waffly than I am today in this video so have some patience with me if you're newer to this channel but uh, it, it still holds up so I'm going to do some additional editing clean up the sound and hopefully uh, you'll enjoy it hmm trowels why who when what are they any good well, first of all, I would say that the public perception of archaeology tool usage is very much coloured by um, Hollywood and, and essentially films, the, the, the portrayal of archaeologists in film. And I would say actually that often when, whenever I, when I talk to people in general about archaeology, the first thing that they say is, uh, Ooh, uh, you guys, you use brushes, don't you? I've seen Jurassic Park. And, um, and essentially they're mistaking paleontologists or muddling up paleontologists with archaeologists. Now, of course, archaeologists do use brushes, but we don't necessarily dig up dinosaur fossils. And, and that particular technique, which is shown in the film, isn't necessarily all, all that accurate for, for paleontologists, or certainly not all encompassing, it doesn't cover everything that they do, never mind what archaeologists do. A second popular ref point of reference in, in film is, is that iconic moment when Indiana Jones in the first in the Raiders of the Lost Ark, well, although the second chronologically film, uh, um, actually uncovers uh, the, 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 the chamber in which the, the, the Ark of the, Co of the Covenant is held. And, it, and there's, there's this sort of uh, iconic silhouette of, of, a, of a work gang chipping away at muck and sand to reveal a stone uh, um, tablet which has to be sort of shifted out of the way. Um, but all the while they're, 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 they're hurling um, pickaxes and mattocks at the ground. And again, this is very iconic and often people will think of that when they think of archaeology. But unfortunately, trowel usage and trowels aren't the most uh, photogenic or exciting um, <laughs> of, uh, of tools or activities to put into a film. And therefore, often many people don't consider them at all. But you are quite right, Monster Hunter uh, uh, number nine or Monster Hunter nine, uh, that yes, archaeologists do have an unnatural affinity or even love for their trowel. 
And my trowel of, uh, of, of, uh, of many years now uh, is this one here. I absolutely adore it. I have already made a video about my trowel, so I won't go on, on about it. But what I will say actually is that I've actually stopped using this trowel uh, on excavations. I have, I have a, a, a whole other kit, as it were, and in there is a newer trowel which I use on digs, because this one I want to preserve. I do, I do adore this trowel. Um, but why? And, uh, and also, why on earth do archaeologists use trowels at all? And also, what's the history of the trowel, I suppose? Well, first of all, the history of the trowel is quite a long one, and it's not really worth going into it all, all here. But what I will say is one of the oldest trowels, or indeed two of the oldest trowels that I've ever come across, um, are to be found in the Roman, uh, well, the Roman Archaeology Museum attached to the Roman fort of Vindolanda on Hadrian's Wall. When I was there, I took some, some photographs of a couple of trowels, and this is basically going on the better part of 2,000 years old. So trowels are very old, they're ancient tools, and in this instance they're used for for, uh, for flattening um, uh, plaster, but also actually as well in buildings. So trowels are a builder's tool. Uh, in, in the history of archaeology and the trowel, what's the earliest usage that we can think of or that we can find? Well, I came across a wonderful article actually, uh, I believe on the CBA website. I'll put a link to it in the link uh, in the information bar just below. It's a fairly short article, but it's well worth a read. And it's about that history of the, the use of the trowel in archaeology. And um, unfortunately, the author comes to the conclusion that, ironically, uh, the trowel and its history in archaeology has been lost forever. However, um, they do come up with a couple of, of interesting sort of uh, timeline points to refer to. So first of all, the earliest use of a trowel that this author could find dated back to 1906 and uh, Glastonbury Lake Village. There was a, a picture of a man who was pointing at a feature with the trowel um, and uh, presumably also been using it for excavation. And this, uh, so this is an early 20th century usage, not the first ever usage, presumably, but this is the first one that they could confirm, if you see what I mean. Um, the, 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 the people who were in charge of that excavation were actually uh, contemporaries and colleagues of uh, the great General Pitt Rivers. And uh, so the question is, did Pitt Rivers use a trowel? Did his team? And um, this author went and found um, a photograph from 1897, and this actually shows no sign of trial usage amongst the team. It's actually a photo of, of the team very proudly brandishing their tools, displaying what they do on site, and there you can see picks, shovels, uh, uh, um, buckets, and nail brushes. You can't actually see any trowel there. So we may actually be looking at a, at a, a relatively late uptake of the trowel, or at least after a couple of generations, into archaeology. So it hasn't always been used in archaeology. And indeed, actually, initially, um, there was a bit of a joke uh, about the origins of archaeology being essentially an antiquarianism, whereby people would take gardening implements, you know, vicars would go off for the weekend and dig a barrow, and they'd take with them a gardening trowel, which is not the same thing as, a, as an archaeologist or, I suppose, a plasterer's or builder's trowel. It's, it's sort of shaped like a miniature a shovel, I suppose. Um, or they would take shovels, forks, and possibly a pickaxe or two. Uh, so in that sense, uh, the, 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 the practice of excavation didn't um, begin with the trowel, the trowel came into use. So that sort of hints at what I'm going to talk about next, and that is why the trowel is useful. The trowel became useful, and it became um, uh, increasingly clearly, uh, it, it became seen as indispensable to the archaeologist because of the, the way that you're, you're able to excavate with a trowel. Now, um, First of all, the trowel is almost like an extension of your arm when you're on a dig. It sounds a bit cheesy, it sounds almost like a, a line from a bad martial arts movie, but it is. Uh, and you can, um, if nothing else, you can actually feel the texture of the ground uh, as, you, as you become more familiar with the trowel through the trowel handle. Uh, especially with wooden handles, you can feel when the, hard, when the ground is hard, when it's soft, you can feel the various lumps and bumps, you can feel like there's gravel in there. So it becomes a, 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 a tactile experience. The most common use of a trowel on an excavation actually is for scraping back, essentially cleaning layers. So you're, you're scraping off uh, um, excess muck to reveal a context layer, usually for recording. And that can be quite a laborious task, and no doubt that's why it doesn't often make it into Hollywood films. But I've seen uh, trials used in many different ways. You can use tr a trial, for example, in a, a jabbing motion. Perhaps you want to remove 
uh, a block of clay from around a particular lens or the context, or maybe you know, there's something in the middle, and you can very carefully just pry this clay off. Now, obviously, there's a risk there, and that is that um, you may well damage whatever it is you're trying to recover. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing that. Um, I've also seen the sort of the corner of the trowel, the sort of the, the kite corner just there, um, used to pick out um, stones and bits of gravel from a context. Uh, if perhaps as you're scraping, you just keep on hitting this particular point, which is really bothering you, so you just pick it out with the corner. Um, I've even seen um, this section of the trial just here, the sort of uh, the, the, the uh, I suppose that where the attachment to the handle um, on some trials isn't quite so um, perpendicular, I guess, and um, uh, it's uh, it's a little bit more uh, it's a, it's a, it's a more gentle angle angle, and it's been used certainly on one excavation that I've seen as um, uh, an anchor point where there was a piece of interwar archaeology. It was like a, a bit of a piece of rod with like a hook on the end and they just put the, the trowel into the hook and used both hands and just yeah, yanked the thing out of the ground. Um, so there are many different ways to use the trowel. You can also use it as a, as a bit of a, 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 um, a percussion uh, tool as well to, to shake off excess muck off a find or an artifact or, or um, or just to just to test actually the, the how uh, what the resonance of an art object or maybe even a piece of stone is you can hear the ring actually often if you hit it so all of these different techniques all these different uses and also even the butt of the trowel you can use as well to 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 to, to dislodge monk um actually they imply the most a crucial element of the trowel and that is that it allows you a certain amount of, of empathy with what it is that you're digging and um, where where you where if you use a shovel you're essentially you've got a shovel sure okay you're holding the shovel but more to the point you're using your foot and usually a boot and usually a steel toe capped thick boot to do the digging and that's going to uh, lessen your interaction with, with what it is that you're digging. Also, a shovel is, just isn't delicate enough, whereas this, at every point, usually, especially the more you dig, you can, you can build up a sense of what it is you're, that you're handling and therefore uh, make decisions as you go, as people often say, at the trowel's edge, as to how you proceed with the excavation. So the trowel is wonderful because it is, uh, to a certain extent, an extension of your own body. And therefore, as you, become to, as you come to use it, you understand more and indeed you connect more, as cheesy as it sounds, with the archaeology that you're digging. Now, um, so, so I suppose what I would say there is, yes, uh, at Monster Hunter 9, we do adore our trowels, um, and, uh, but we're not just being sentimental. Trowels, they become, um, they become like an extra sense. It's, like, it's almost like listening to the ground when you want to I don't know, see if a herd of wildebeest is coming or something like that, which often happens in Wall's End, clearly. Um, it, it becomes something which, uh, which you rely on for more than just getting muck out of the way. It actually, it actually helps you understand what you're digging. Um, but also, in that sense, because of that, it is a great piece of kit, and that's the reason why we still use it. Having said that, the aforementioned ingenuity of archaeologists also leads us to investigate constantly new ways of digging and new ways of recording. So, yes, we live in an age of mechanical diggers, you know, the JCB. Um, uh, the, 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 these will be used for getting rid of, of, uh, of layers which are either of no immediate interest or maybe are of seen uh, or have been shown to be sterile and um, you know it, there's no point in scraping back archaeology or rather um, layers of, of ground which don't have archaeology in so not, you don't always have to be that careful and therefore yes you'll often see usually at the beginnings of excavation uh, a, a giant mechanical bucket bucket being used but also that's the, the, the tool ranges all the way from that kind of uh, machine uh, past the trowel and the shovel and the, and the mattock or the pickaxe, all the way through to the use of, for example, dental tools or even uh, bits of bamboo. And again, it's all about being aware of the tool's usage and how it will not only help you to get the most data, but also how it will affect the, 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 the archaeology itself. So, for example, a metal trowel may not be the best uh, for excavating a piece of wood or, or bone, which is delicate and maybe a bit, a bit wet. So maybe you want to use some bamboo instead, uh, which has been shaped and rounded. Perhaps you'll want to make use of plastic or, or as I say, dental tools when it comes to um, getting rid of, uh, of um, muck from the crevices of human or animal bones. Occasionally, you may well scrape a stone with a, with a dental tool, and that goes right through me, if I'm honest, because, um, uh, well, I don't much like the dentist. But, uh, but I suppose what I'm getting at is that no, to answer the second part of your question, or, or sort of rather the middle uh, part element of your question, it's not just sentimentality because we do use everything from mechanical diggers all the way through to, to very delicate uh, things which a dentist might use to get rid of plaque on your teeth, that kind of thing.
So hopefully this discussion, um, though slightly rambling, has gone some way to answering your question, Monster Hunter 9. Uh, thank you for asking. The trowel is wonderful. I love my trowel and many other archaeologists love theirs, but it's also a very, very useful tool. And in that sense, we're not just being sentimental, we're not just holding on to the past. And as ever, I think archaeology is a wonderful uh, discipline because yes, we study the past, but we always have one eye on the future and better ways of doing what we do. So once again, thank you very much for asking the question, and uh, well, there you go. I'll let now open up um, the, the video, I suppose, for comments. If people wanted to comment on the use of trowel, how maybe how they've seen trowels being used on, on sites, I'm sure there are a myriad of stories out there. Please do comment. I'm sure Monster Hunter 9 would like to hear more. And indeed, if you have any ideas or any um, alternative tools that you want to discuss, please do discuss them below. Once again, I think Monster Hunter would like to hear about it. So there you go. Uh, thank you very much for watching and it's been a wonderful um, question to answer and also frankly I've enjoyed wearing my Santa hat. I absolutely love it. So until next time guys, look after yourselves. Bye bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.